<laughs> it's yeah, it's funny. Uh, I get a lot of people asking me if I got it from that uh, really old. I think it was like a Disney short. Of it was ske back, skeletons. Yeah, people think back, I got it from that. But yeah, Dis yeah Disney used to be dark, dark. But it's cool. Yeah, <laughs> you should you should tell me. No, no, they actually they asked me for permission. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I should probably say that. This video is brought to you by U-Gears. We'll hear more about them later, but for now, let's get on to today's video. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to local music wherever it may be, and the people that make it, including my guest, who is a frontman for a California-based band full of imaginative individuals from different backgrounds. Known for blending indie, alternative, and punk rock with a nice infusion of hip-hop to make a unique sound, their new single, Bread and Circus, is out now. Please welcome to the channel, Jorge Lopez from The Dancing Skeletons. Say hi, Jorge. Hi, everyone. Hi, how's it going? Thank you very much for having me. Cool, cool. Um, first off, if you want to be like Jorge and be featured on the channel, whether reviewed, interviewed, or both, hit me up using my email address by clicking down below or click the social media link for Room 6, and that's where you'll find all the things I'm up to online. Um, ways you can support the channel, should you so desire, like going to room6.shop and picking up some sweet merch. And what the heck, go ahead and click that like, share, and subscribe button. It all helps, and I thank you. So right off the bat, I want to ask, why the name? Why the Dancing Skeletons? The Dancing Skeletons came about after... Um, I remember I wanted to have a name that best reflected sort of my opinions and views on music in general. And I know it's a, an opinion and view that most people share, and that's the fact that uh, music is often described as a, a universal language, something that unites people. Um, not to get all cheesy about it, but I really wanted something to kind of reflect that sort of idea or that notion. And so, um, you know, I, I feel like in society, often we get judged by what's on the surface and uh, not really what's kind of beneath that. And so I think that's sort of how I came up with the dancing skeletons because underneath you know there's a lot of similarities when we get the opportunity to kind of go past what's on the surface um so yeah that's how the the dancing skeletons came about and i also just wanted a name that sort of kind of also expressed how uh everyone's welcome in my circle and in my community and anyone can listen to the music so yeah i just wanted a sort of uh, a name that sort of kind of gave off a uh unity type vibe to it very cool that's much deeper than i thought we were going to go i i figured you're going to say like well i saw this viral TikTok about spooky scary skeletons and <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah it's funny uh, i get a lot of people asking me if i got it from that uh really old i think it was like a disney short of it was scary ske back, skeletons yeah people think back, i got it from that but yeah Dis yeah disney it isn't to be the dark. Case, but it's cool yeah you should you should tell me no no they actually they asked me for permission <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I should probably say that, <laughs> right? All right, so um, I want to start uh, get to one of my like usual interview questions that the OG Room Sixers know what's coming. I always start my interviews uh, generally with this because it's it's amazing how everybody answers slightly different. I want to mm. talk about your earliest musical influence, and by that I mean, do you remember a moment where you said, "I want to do that"? Um, well, I think it's funny. Uh, I think. The closest to that event would probably be when I was in high school. I was a huge band, uh, a huge fan, excuse me, a huge fan of this band called Rise Against. If anyone ah, has yes. ever like, heard of them, yeah, I was really into that sort of like the two thousands punk, uh, alternative pop pop punk uh, scene, and uh, I really resonated with this band called Rise Against. I really liked the lyrics and the melodies that were being written. Um, so I remember I used to be like, so obsessed with them. Uh, I don't listen to them that much anymore. I'm kind of branched out to different genres as I've gotten older. Uh, but I remember, uh, in high school and early college, um, uh, I just was obsessed with that band. And I, I remember my first show was like in 2011 and it was my first concert experience and it was, it was watching them. So it was pretty amazing uh but in actuality um if i were to say what really kind of like propelled this 
uh, path of wanting to be a musician. Um, surprisingly enough, it was actually my mom's idea. Um, oh, wow. I, bef well, before the age of like 14 slash 13, um, I didn't really show any signs of wanting to do anything with music. I was always very much a casual fan. I didn't really grow up like being fan, like a huge fan of any type of uh, band or artist. Um, but I remember one time my mom just out of the blue asked me if you could learn one instrument, what would it be? And um, again, just to show you how casual and basic I was when it comes to music, I just said guitar because the guitar is just, I guess I'll, I'd like to learn a guitar. And yeah, it was completely her decision, which was really surprising. I don't know. She, my mom has always been pretty intuitive and I think she always kind of saw a creative side in me. Um, so she kind of, uh, put me in the, this like guitar lesson class and at the local YMCA, uh, which is, was also surprising because I didn't know, uh, YMCA taught, um, uh, uh, guitar lessons, but, uh, it was just some guy who rented out the back room and like teaching kids <laughs> how to like play guitar. And, uh, I spent uh, a good amount of months learning and once i learned the basics i kind of just stopped going and um it didn't take long for me to just be like i kind of want to write my own songs i've always kind of been creative and imaginative and i would always constantly daydream so i it was it was sort of just natural for me to like once i learned how to like learn to play the basic instrument i've always just gravitated towards writing my own music as opposed to playing covers uh, it, it, so uh, but I would say, you know, as I started to branch out and learn, listen to more music, I would say that listening to Rise Against helped motivate um, that, uh, what I wanted to do for sure. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's a little bit of my story. <laughs> right on. Um, so how long has the Beautiful Skeletons been a band? Uh, the, the, the Dancing Skeletons. I'm sorry. I I'm sorry. The Dancing Skeletons. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, no worries. The Dancing Skeletons. Uh, I started the band all like ten, 10 years ago, like uh, 2014, um, with members who are actually no longer a part of it. Um, throughout the years, as I was sort of learning how to manage a band in the LA scene, uh, that's where I'm from, um, I've gone... I've, the band has experienced many musicians coming and going, um, but I've always stayed, you know, the band, uh, I'm pretty much, I guess, like the face and creator of the band. Uh, so um, I, I always just was kind of going through different musicians, different friends that came into my life who wanted to be a part of it. Uh, unfortunately, not everybody stuck around. They wanted to do kind of like their own thing. Um, but yeah, uh, as of right now, I got a good circle around me, uh, but it was since 2014, but not until semi recently, like 2022, have we been really, um, kind of finding our footing and making more progress when it comes to playing shows, recording music and, um, gaining good traction with more listeners and fans alike. Awesome. Um, the reason I asked that is it leads me to another one of my usual interview questions, which is, do you have one, like, just memorable show moment where you're performing, and something happened that you're like, that's either that's one for my rock star checklist, or things went way off the rails, or, you know, what do you have? If that's your, your one moment, you pull out a party like this one time? Ah, it's so funny, because I was having a conversation about this recently with a friend, how um, there wasn't I don't recall anything so crazy, um, but uh, the best positive memories that I have are just, um, you, you just have one of those shows where like, there's like a crowd full of people and they're just like really vibing with you. Um, um, yeah, n unfortunately nothing like too crazy where like it was like, you know, oh my God, like you can't believe this has happened. Um, but yeah, I mean, one of, one of the best shows I guess one of the most memorable shows was actually the first show I ever played. 
because that was such a huge moment for me. And it shows that people really resonated with what I was doing. Um, I remember uh, it was an it was a show in Anaheim at this venue called um, uh, The Chain Reaction uh, in Anaheim. And it was the first show I've ever played. And I played and, you know, people really loved it uh, so much to the point where, like, even after the show, uh, I went to go eat at the local Denny's and um, right across the street. And uh, a few kids from the, from the venue came out and wanted to meet me in Denny's and were telling me how I was the best band of the night and all that stuff. And <laughs> I don't know, it, it felt like a really cool rock star moment to have like strangers just coming up to you, kind of telling you like what they really liked your stuff. Um, so yeah, I think it was like the first time. I think it was maybe like my first show. It was a really nice uh, experience. And I think that sort of like kind of stuck with me ever since then. So that's why I kind of never really stopped <laughs> doing this. Because I, I think I was, I think subconsciously, I'm kind of like always kind of chasing that feeling in that moment, for sure. No time like the first time. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. Um, so back in 2017, May 19th, to be exact. Uh, you posted a picture on Instagram of, oh. uh, of a little known project that I, I want. I want to know when is the release date of the pigeon sessions? The pigeon sessions. Oh, my gosh. That's that's so funny. That's uh, I remember. In 2017, I was actually in college and I was trying to do this uh, side project away from uh, my band. Um, and it was more hip hop oriented and, uh, I wanted to do more hip hop, uh, music and I even, uh, wanted a hip hop name and I called myself clean pigeon and I had a friend who was supposed to be a part of it. We were going to be a duo. Um, he was going to be like my producer, he's going to make my beats and, um, he, uh, he called himself dirty pigeon. So I was clean pigeon. He was dirty pigeon. And it was sort of like, it was just like a silly thing we were kind of doing. Uh, it was definitely something that I wanted to kind of explore more and kind of like, uh, I just wanted to start a project that kind of like took the stress away a little bit, you know, because the dancing skeletons is kind of like my baby. I feel like I'm a lot more focused on, you know, sort of like the quality of uh, the songs that I write. And I put a lot more thought into what I put out. Um, but, uh, I kind of wanted a, uh, si uh, project where I can kind of just kind of like let loose a little bit and just kind of like, uh, just come up with anything, rap about anything, um, and with my good friend, uh, and yeah, that's how it, that's how it was. Um, uh, but we have, I, I put some songs, I, I, I made a, uh, a, a sound cloud. It's called clean pigeon. If you can find it, uh, you'll see some of my stuff. Um, but yeah, that, um, that was, a that was, a that was quite a nostalgic time for sure. <laughs> Sounds like it. Um, so, Hey, real quick, we're going to take a quick break here. Message yeah. from Fu future Josh, but stick around because we're going to be seeing a kind of a musical slideshow featuring their new track bread and circus. So, uh, you won't want to miss that in the meantime, here's a message from future Josh and we'll see you in a minute. And now, a word from our sponsors. Thanks, Josh, from the past. You know what I love most about things like guitars? The engineering. All these parts separately do nothing, but together, they make something capable of inspiring and motivating creative thought and emotional content. We need emotional content. That's why I love U-Gears. Their amazing 3D self-assembly models are fun to assemble, as well as educational. They can also serve as decorative pieces. Although the kits come with clear step-by-step -step instruction, they can also be used as puzzles. Inspired by steampunk fantasy, there's a clear view of all the moving components, including gears and pendulums, and it creates a unique, unforgettable, and fascinating look at everyday, and not so everyday, machinery. To top it all off, 10% of every purchase is being donated to the people of Ukraine who have been affected by the current conflict. Just for watching this video, and for being part of Room 6, and for a limited time, you can use my affiliate link down in the description to get 10% off your order. Just enter coupon code SHOP10 at checkout. Plus, 
you'll be helping out the channel. Thanks to you gears for being a sponsor, and let's get back to the show, shall we? We're back, and if that sponsor spot interested you at all, please consider clicking the link down below. You'll save some money, I'll make some money, it's a win-win. Now then, uh, like I said before that, stick around, we're gonna be seeing a kind of a musical slideshow from my guest act uh, called Bread and Circus. The act is known as the Dance of Skeleton, and my guest is Jorge. So, uh, back to you. Now, we talked a little bit about your earliest musical influence and about kind of uh, the, the big, that big rock star moment of being like recognized and told how great you are, and also uh, the little known um, clean pigeon <laughs> sessions out there, if you can yeah. find it. Um, I wanted to talk about what's on the horizon like is there like a dream gig coming or or something you're 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 aiming towards or is there something that the viewers should know about um yeah uh so my third album is going to come out um this january 10th um 2025 uh i recorded the, the music uh with my good buddy his name is mario deliva shout out to mario deliva uh he owns his own studio in uh downtown la uh, I love working with him. We, um, we, we're, I, I think we definitely make a really good duo. Um, me as a musician and him as, uh, the engineer slash producer. Uh, but yeah, we worked really hard on it. Uh, that's actually, um, the single bread and circus that, um, that's actually in the album. Um, but yeah, uh, we, we released two singles so far, one called Leo, the late bloomer. Uh, and we were, the second single is, Bread and Circus, and uh, after that, um, uh, I'm going to finally release the uh, the album uh, January 10th of 2025. Um, I would have released it sooner, but I want people to kind of focus on Christmas and the holidays. Um, but yeah, once the new year comes in, uh, I'm hoping to um, not only release this music, but also help support it by just uh, lining up dates, uh, show dates. Uh, for sure. Uh, I do have a show January 11th at this place called uh, The Last Call. It's a bar called The Last Call. Uh, it's in t located in Tarzana, California, uh, just on the outskirts of LA. Um, but yeah, um, I have uh, a lot more planned after that. I think 2025, at least the first half, I'm going to do a lot uh, of shows to support the new album and just do my best and trying to spread the word. Um, but yeah, but uh, I'm constantly writing, constantly writing new music. Uh, I even, uh, I always tell Mario after we're done with an album that I got the next album ready and can we nice. link up again? Yeah. Um, funny enough, uh, uh, I actually told him that uh, recently, we're going to meet up soon just to work on the fourth album. <laughs> I'm going to track some demos with him. Uh, but yeah, I'm just constantly writing because uh, that's just my passion, what I like to do, uh, more so than playing shows, strangely enough. I know a lot of musicians, you know, they write music so that they can play shows. Uh, but in my case, I just play shows just because I love writing music. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, um, just more music and more stuff. I do want to get into... Uh, doing more music videos and having more of an online presence. Um, so yeah, more stuff, uh, but we're taking it step by step, a little by little, uh, as, uh, as to not overwhelm me too much and stress me out. Uh, but that's coming up January third album. Really excited. Uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, definitely stay tuned uh, for that. Uh, you can use the social media links that I'm going to have down in the description to uh, follow the dancing skeletons keep a, a breast of, and maybe go see a show and tell them room six sent you. Um, yeah. So from there, we've got a couple more questions and then we're going to go ahead and uh, check out that musical slideshow for bread and circus. I wanted to ask kind of a weird question, which was sweatier. <laughs> okay. Think back to the pigeon heads. Okay. Uh, which was sweatier Santa Claus or Jack in the box? Oh, <laughs> Wow. Um, deep cuts, deep cuts. For sure, Santa, Santa Claus. Yeah, I, yeah, I would deep say cuts. Yeah, be. those are, um, those were um, characters I dressed up for in Halloween. Um, I, I remember, I think Jack in the Box was uh, 2021. Mm -hmm. um, yep. 
2023 was uh, Santa Claus. 2023 was Santa Claus. I thought it would be funny if I dressed up as Santa Claus for Halloween. Um, it was. It was. And you were, I, I, you got a picture right next to Santa Claus, which <laughs> or, or to a, a, a Santa Claus like sign or whatever. And I, I was yeah. like, it took me a second to real. No, that's Halloween. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I don't it think was, anybody does that. I, I just thought it was, I, I always, every Halloween, I always just kind of like, I, I want to be something that I think is just funny. Like I was like, you know, 2021, I was Jack in the box just cause I thought it'd be funny to be Jack in the box. Right. And then I think I was Winnie the Pooh on this next, the, the next year. And then uh, last year I was Santa Claus cause, just cause I thought it was, gonna be funny but it was definitely uh very sweaty yeah, yeah because i would just kind of move around and just dance and it's like and i and i'm really committed to the character every time i dress up so i don't like to take off my costume Respect. so I, yeah i'm just there and i'm dying uh but i'll, I'll yeah, bet winnie the pooh was sweaty too those uh i always I, feel for the the cast members of disney yeah. the ones who the ones who have to dress up in those things because I mean, I've I've worn one or two, and you're just like, oh my god, how does somebody do this for eight, like a whole shift? Um, yeah. <clears throat> real quick question on the Jack in the Box: Did you make <laughs> that head? Because that looked legit. No, um, no. I mean, yes and no, not really. Uh, so I went on eBay and I found this guy <laughs> who like who like made the parts. Um, so he, he, I just had to kind of construct it and put uh, it all together. That's how he yeah. got around the copyright. Yeah, yeah, I, I guess so. But he, he was selling the parts so you can make it yourself. And um, and I was just like, yeah, I want to do that. It looks like pretty good quality. And it I totally had a looks real. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I actually and I actually uh, uh, crashed a, a random Jack in the Box as Jack in the Box. And it was a pretty cool experience because people were like taking photos. And oh, um, that's sick. That's yeah, awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, someone from the uh, I was inside the Jack in the Box and a mom from uh from the drive through got out of her car with her kid and then because she really wanted a picture with me and her son right i mean who's, <laughs> who who like, sees jack yeah. in, the, in the wild <laughs> yeah exactly um um uh, i thought it would have been funny if i like started firing people but i, <laughs> no, I, I didn't do it <laughs> uh did, did the did the jack in the box give you like any free food or drink or anything no, I was hoping. No, uh, it's so funny because yeah. everyone was like really vibing with it, except for the person taking our order. Like he, he uh, the person in the in the register at the he's front. He's working on Halloween, man. <laughs> yeah, you could, I, I could just tell like by his face, like he was just not with it. Like he was just like not vibing with what I was this doing might at as all. Well like, he was like, I'm just trying to do my job here, which I respected. I didn't give him a hard time. I just right said my order but he didn't walk like, in what up bitches <laughs> yeah but uh, but other uh but other uh workers from the back uh, i guess i don't know uh, they were taking their lunch or i don't know they just you know were pretending to take their lunch but they came out and they wanted a picture with me so uh, I mean, it was really, really cool picture with the boss right on yeah. all right last question exactly. I, yeah yeah I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off i was gonna say last question you made it yay so Hell yeah uh, this is another usual interview question of mine. That I always end my interviews this way. Um, and again, I, I always get like different answers. So mm -hmm. OG Room Sixers, you know what's coming. Stick around. Like I said, we're going to see the musical uh, slideshow for Bread and Circus. And check out the social media links down below so that you can find out what the Dance of Skeletons are up to and hopefully see a show near you. Here we go. Jorge. Yeah. We're going to circle back to that earliest musical influence question, and I want you to, I want you to jump in your little time machine. We're going to go talk mm -hmm. to little Jorge, okay? Right. The the one who discovered, uh, well, discovered, uh, rise, rise against. against. Yeah, rise yeah. against. I I wanted to say rising ashes. I don't, I don't know where. That <laughs> anyway, that's a whole new. That, that's my college band. Anyway, um, so rise against. So, what is one thing that you wish you could go back and tell yourself, hey? You're going to need to know this. And it doesn't have to be a warning. It could be motivational or, or like, hang in there, kid. But what is one thing you wish that somebody had told you when you said, I want to go do that? I guess I, 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 if there's, like, one advice I could tell my younger self, and it doesn't necessarily have to be in regards to music, even though in this case I would say... Uh, the, the same advice, but I would just probably tell them not to be so afraid to f 
fail. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of the times I consider myself a late bloomer and oftentimes the reason why I bloom so late is because I guess sometimes I'm, I'm afraid to sort of take certain chances. Um, I was always, even when I was young, you know, little Jorge was always aspiring to uh, play a show or do something music related, but I just didn't really take the chance because I was just shy or I just really thought, um, I, you know, I, I really, I wasn't good enough. Um, but I think it would have benefited, benefited me a lot if I started uh, as early as I, as I could have to really gain that confidence and that experience. Um, and I, and this just applies to like life in general. And I would definitely tell my younger self to um, not be afraid to fail and to give my myself permission to fail. Cause I do believe that, uh, as I'm old, I, you know, I'm older now. Uh, I just turned, uh, 30, uh, past few months. Um, you, you, after you kind of go through those hurdles, you kind of look back and realize that, you know, all the times you felt like, you know, you didn't do something well, or you failed at something. Um, all those failures, uh, in your pursuit towards success, uh, you realize that, it, that it's just part of the fun, really. So um, I, it's definitely an advice I would tell my younger self and to anyone out there who uh, wants to get into music, but is kind of too afraid to start or take the next step. It's like, you know, hey, give yourself permission to fail. It's okay. Like, in order to succeed, you got to lose. And you'll realize it's just all part of the fun. It's part of the process. So that's what I would say. Yeah. I couldn't say it any better. And that's actually good advice for all of all people of all ages that, you know, don't wait to do the thing. It's never going to be the right time. Exactly. Yeah. Well, all right. Thank you very much for watching. And thank you, Jorge, for coming on the channel. Stick around. Thank We're going to be seeing that uh, music slideshow for Bread and Circus. And we'll catch you in the outro. In the meantime, we'll temporarily say goodbye and see you in a minute.
to thank Jorge Lopez from the Dancing Skeletons for coming on the channel. It was a great interview and an awesome musical slideshow. If you want to know more about them, go ahead and click those social media links down below. And other than that, if you want to see more videos like this, please click up here. If you want to subscribe, click over there. Don't forget to ring the bell. And if you want to hear my own music, click over there. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye, Jorge. Bye, everyone. Thank you very much for having me. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -bum. <laughs>